Sir, Lord Anubis and Rose have been taken from holding. A man whirled in his swivel chair to say, What? The captain stood angrily. First they hitch a ride, and then less than ten minutes they spring both of our priority prisoners? Show me! The digital readout screen went dark, flipping through angle after angle of several different rooms. Then it showed Anubis's examination room. Men were strewn about in a carpet of pain and blood spatter. Others were on their feet, checking the ones that weren't moving. We are half a second behind them. Start checking every camera. Yes, sir. The man typed rapidly and 36 different camera slots showed up on the big screen all at once. They looked. Then 36 more. They looked again. Then 36 more. There, he pointed and then tack attacked a few times to make it the full screen. Lord Anubis, looking much larger than before, was carting Rose in his arms while Shield Maiden led the way. Shield Maiden was cradling her ear when they stopped at an intersection. They're being guided, the captain realized, slamming a fist on his captain's chair. Where is that? He pointed at the screen. They're coming up on, uh... Mess hall number two, sir. They seem to be making for the nearest emergency fire escape, the security man said. Helmsman, I want this ship in the sky right now, the captain said, throwing off his cloak. We'll have reached flight speed in 40 seconds, captain, the helmsman said urgently, slowly dialing up the speed as he spoke. Take us up as soon as humanly possible. The captain turned and dashed for the door. More and more facts were sliding into place. Anubis's examination room looked just like Rose's home when she was done killing everyone. Bodies everywhere. The purple leotard under glass that he'd seen. Rose's combat insult. My apprentice can do better. Shield Maiden was Rose's apprentice. That made her dangerous. Very dangerous. Sir, take a security team with you, Radar Dibley said, standing with a worried look. No, if Shield Maiden is anything like Rose, she will slaughter anyone I put in her way. I'll go myself and stop all of them, he said, throwing open the double doors and running. Helm, you have the bridge. Yes, sir, he said, watching the bars of speed and power slowly rise on his screen. There was a short silence on the bridge, and Radar Dibley twitched a little. What is it, Dibley? It's... She clamped both hands over her large headphones. It's a lifeboat. One of the lifeboats just ejected into the river. Who's running? Should we blow it up? One of the other bridge crew asked. The helmsman stroked his chin. No. We can see the heroes running there, he pointed at the screen. Cowardly sailor? Maybe. But that doesn't mean we kill him. That's the captain's call, and I won't make it for him. Track it, and leave it alone. Yes, sir. Radar Dibley said, smiling a little. She loved it when he got all decisive like that. It was kind of sexy. She bent over her screen, fighting a girlish smile. Now, find the blue one. What was her name? Gel Girl? Yes, sir. The security chairman leaned over his screen, furiously flipping through different cameras. Suddenly, there she was. There! She's in a server room! What? Why? The helmsman said, slowly tilting back the joysticks. Everyone else in there is unconscious and she's barred the door! The helmsman's eyes suddenly widened. She must be patched into the computer. That's how they're getting around the ship so easily. Contact engineering and cut power to that entire deck. Yes, sir. The message was put out, and suddenly, Gel Girl was plunged into darkness. Ako lost contact with the hunter's trap. A blast of static filled Shield Maiden's ear, and she shrieked, almost tossing the receiver away. Mr. Moon ran the halls, rushing down the stairs, then down another hall, then down more stairs. This is the helmsman speaking. A voice boomed over the entire ship's intercom. Deck 5, server room 2 is under enemy control. Repeat, 
Deck 5, Server Room 2 is under enemy control. Anyone in the vicinity, converge and eliminate the woman that has barricaded herself inside. Gel Girl, half a ship away and standing under the emergency lights, looked at the intercom in horror and then rushed for the door. Shoot, 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 shoot! She lifted her silvery communicator. The jig is up, sugar. Everybody knows I'm here! Aiko, miles away, held her earpiece. I know bullets can't hurt you, but if there's magic or energy weapons... I know! Gel Girl shouted. Shield Maiden, you're almost out, right? Just jump into the water. We'll swim for it. Got it. We're almost there. Shield Maiden said from wherever she and Anubis and Rose were. Get off the ship. We'll be fine. Gel Girl threw the debris off the door, stepping out into the hall. Men with guns and truncheons and riot shields were running her way. Well, that don't look so bad. The truncheons were then ignited into cattle prod-looking weapons. All right, time to bail then. She looked feverishly around, seeing a porthole window. Grabbing a nearby metal crate, she smashed the glass and jumped for it. Slorping out the window, her outfit tore and she splashed into the water far, far below. The hunter's trap was rapidly laboring out of the water. Oh, now it's worse. She lifted her silvery communicator. Shield Maiden, the hunter's trap has taken off. Get off the ship, now! Shield Maiden kicked another door in. Anubis carried Rose like she weighed nothing, trailing behind her. It was some kind of mess hall or cafeteria. All the way opposite to them was an emergency hatch, surrounded by yellow lights. Through the circular porthole, they could see outside. Let's go. We're almost there. We can jump into the river from here. Yes. Anubis nodded, clinging to Rose and cradling her over his shoulder. Anubis is good swimmer. Yes. They dashed for it until a side door burst open and Mr. Moon charged out with a shout. No one is going anywhere. His boots screamed as he skidded along the perfectly clean metal floor between themselves and their exit. Get out of the way, Shield Maiden demanded. Oh, this is the one that trounced Rose and stole Anubis. Yes. Anubis's muzzle rumpled up into a vicious display of crisscrossing teeth. But he took a slight step back as he spoke. He is very strong. Yes. We're leaving. Move. Shield Maiden charged, swinging a wide haymaker. Mr. Moon ducked, swing swinging with both fists to crack his knuckles against Shield Maiden's shield. They danced back and forth in a quick display of hand-to-hand -hand combat, leaping and swinging and grunting at each other. When they parted, both sides were panting a bit. Shield Maiden could see, even out the tiny window, that the ship was still rising. Anubis... Take Rose and go, she said over her shoulder. What? Anubis said, ears perking in shock. You have to get off the ship before we get too high. Take her and go. Just cross your ankles before you hit the water. You'll be fine. Go, Shield Maiden said. This is the edge of the ship. Just go into the next room and... Mr. Moon charged and she received his massive weight. Leaning backward on purpose, she launched him past herself with his own momentum. He rolled and sprang up again with a shout. Don't move, Mr. Moon roared, pointing at him. Seeing Anubis look back and forth between them, he charged Anubis instead. He wouldn't be able to defend himself with a woman in his arms. Shield Maiden charged after him overtook him, and grabbed him up in a spectacular full Nelson. Mr. Moon roared as she interlocked her fingers behind his head and lifted, throwing him off balance. Anubis, go! She shouted, grunting in effort as she wrestled Mr. Moon back and forth. Anubis wants him dead. Yes! Anubis said stubbornly, still snarling despite what he held in his arms. Shield Maiden jerked Mr. Moon sideways so that she could look at him. You love her more than you hate him. 
Get off the damn ship! Anubis looked hurt, but the decision was already made. Young lady. Rose turned her head weakly. The two women locked eyes for a moment. Don't hold back. She could take no more blood and pain from her shattered arm, and her eyes rolled into her head. She went limp. Anubis panicked and then turned and ran for it. No, my prize! Lord Anubis, come back! Mr. Moon roared, flailing back and forth as the giant black jackal vanished from the room. Get your hands off me! He's mine! Mine! Then Shield Maiden did the unthinkable, holding the full Nelson for a few more moments until she was sure Anubis was gone. Her arms lanced around his middle instead, pinning his arms to his sides. Heaving with all of her superhero might, Shield Maiden flung herself upside down and backward, throwing Mr. Moon into a world-shattering German suplex. Mr. Moon hit the metallic floor head and neck first with a resounding crash. Shield Maiden thrashed away, rolling onto her feet and reclaiming her shield. She was panting. Mr. Moon grunted in pain, rolling onto his side. <sighs> Fine, he said, spitting red. We're too high up anyway. Lord Anubis will never find the lifeboats without running into hundreds of my men. If I have to deal with you first, so be it. Shield Maiden was grinning as he put his fists up. What? he demanded. What? she said back. You're smiling. Why? What is it? I'm about to kill you. He didn't sound certain. I just... um... She actually looked embarrassed and scratched the back of her head. I've been seeing a therapist because somebody kidnapped me not long ago. Yeah, weird, I know, I'm a superhero, long story. And you kidnapped my master and my dog. And I'm a lot stronger than I used to be. And you are clearly a tough guy if you kick the shit out of Rose. And it's, um... She gave a coy sort of shrug like she was addressing a prom date. It's just exciting, you know? I feel like I'm gonna get some real, some real catharsis out of this fight. Not only do I get to beat the crap out of a kidnapper, but I don't have to hold back like I normally do with, with regular street thugs, you know? Mr. Moon stared at her for what felt like ages. He looked annoyed, and then angry. I'm going to start hitting you now. I'm not sure when I'm going to stop. This disrespectful, leotard-wearing bitch was treating his day of triumph like it was some kind of game to her. Lord Anubis was running loose aboard the hunter's trap, and she was in his way. Parting his shirt, he freed his sparkling moon medallion. He'd done his rituals. He was prepared for another battle. In the dark, I tear and rend, to end all others with spines to bend. The sudden fist in his face made him roar in pain, shouting and staggering back while he held his face with both hands. No! Shield Maiden pointed at him with a frown. No magic! He grasped the medallion in one stubborn fist. In the dark, I tear and rend, another punch to the mouth. He staggered to one side with a loud grunt. I said no, Shield Maiden said sternly. Fight me man to man, man to woman, man, man, to, man to superhero, she said, fists on her hips. I will fight you at my best. Back off, he roared angrily, testing for blood with his fingertips. Pfft, your best? Losers complain about their best. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. Shield Maiden turned to one side, quoting Sean Connery as she did so. She could see the vein appearing in his forehead. 
Besides, I've sat and watched enough anime with Joe Girl. I know standing back and letting the bad guy power up or, or assume his final form or whatever always ends badly for the hero. He stared at her. He didn't know what anime was, but it sounded stupid. So I'm not gonna let you, she said, shaking a finger at him. Mr. Moon stood with a snarl, both fists clenched and his teeth gritted. Besides, you know the third law of magic? Magic is slow, Mr. Moon said without thinking. Magic is slow, very good, she said like she was teaching him. There was a quiver to him. Good. She'd gotten under his skin. He was frustrated. He was angry. He would not see clearly. He would make mistakes. Shield Maiden had been fighting him since he'd entered the room, not with fists, but with words. Judge's training, however many scars it had left on her mentally, had left her with a new array of tools to make fighting super strong guys like him easier. I fought and trounced your master, and I will do the same to you. He took a threatening step forward. Oh, yes, you kicked the crap out of a 700-year-old chemist, trashed her house, and stole her dog. Must have been a big victory for you. Shield Maiden rolled her eyes, fists on her hips. She watched the seething anger build for a few moments. Me? I live a slightly more active lifestyle. She gave one arm a flex. Her muscles bulged. Mr. Moon swung another mighty fist, but it crashed into her waiting palm. A light ring of dust rushed away from the two of them. There was a gap between you and Rose, Shield Maiden whispered, glowering at him from under her eyebrows. But there is a chasm between you and me. Her words chilled the air. The counterpunch and throw sent Mr. Moon crashing into a series of stacked tables. Mr. Moon labored to his feet, but Shield Maiden was already closing the distance. Left, right, uppercut! Dodge the haymaker, jab, jab, stomach shot, shield block, counter, instep, punch whiffing duck, a powerful punch to the jaw, step, step again, sidestep, a shield bash that put him on his heels. Her short hair slipped from between his fingers when he made for a grab. She grabbed his hair in return, brought her knee up and brought his face down into it. The crack was audible. He seized a chair, breaking it over her head and shoulders before she landed an earth-shattering uppercut to his jaw. He flew bodily into a table and broke it in half with his weight. She chased him, leaping high and leading with her shield. He rolled away just in time for her golden defense to split the metal floor. Grabbing two table legs, he swung the entire thing and she brought her shield up. The furniture shattered. Instep. Eye contact. Left. Right. Kidney shot. Hair grab. Punch. 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 A quick spatter of blood. Mr. Moon fell to his hands and knees, red dripping across the floor. He coughed, slowly crawling to get his bearings. She let him. He fumbled, wiping blood from his mouth. He started drawing a, a hasty rune on the floor with his blood. She stamped on the hand, and the pop of bone made him howl in pain. A quick kick to the ribs sent him rolling. Heaving on adrenaline alone, Mr. Moon thrust himself to his feet, reeling back with all his might. Their knuckles met, punch to punch. His wrist broke. He roared again in pain, falling to his knees to clutch at himself. No magic. No breaks. No mercy. Shield Maiden frowned down at him. 
You hurt my friends, and God only knows what else you've done to Anubis. This is the end of the line. One of his hands was useless. He couldn't fight very well, left-handed. His eyes darted back and forth for something. Anything. The mess hall was all tables and chairs, nothing else. A blood-splattered floor and no obstacles. He didn't have his revolver. Queen Gaia's forces are on their way, too. By the time they get here, it will be more than over. All those people from Metacreature Prison, they're coming here to stop you. What? He gaped up at her in horror. As though on cue, the ship jerked. The low hum of the engines began to turn into a straining whine. Speaking of, I bet that's them now. Shield Maiden turned towards the window. A glowing green line was stretched across the window. Was it string? A rope? Another golden line joined it. Then a few more green, and then another golden one. The scenery outside the window jerked to a halt. They weren't moving anymore. They were caught. Mr. Moon labored to his feet, still clutching at his broken wrist staggering to the portal window. Figures. Figures all around the ship. They were hovering in the air, dressed in green and gold robes that billowed in the breeze. Their heads were hidden under high-pointed caps decorated with golden filigree. Billowing capes had all the same designs. The golden deer of Switzerland. Queen Gaia's forces from Metacreature Prison, American Branch, had arrived. No, he whispered, awestruck by the sheer size of the binding spell that was holding the hunter's trap in one place. How many were there? A hundred? Two hundred? The green and gold-clad figures swarmed all around the ship like a cloud of locusts, throwing glowing line spells like whale hunters throwing ropes. Alarms began to sound. The ship groaned and shuddered, fighting its restraints. Surrender, Captain Mr. Moon! Shield Maiden pointed at him. He turned to look at her. This is my ship. We will fight you to the last man, and I will not be threatened by some mundane bitch in Aaliyah. The first punch silenced him. Palming his chest with a powerful hand, she put him against the wall and followed up. She hit him. She hit him and hit him and hit him some more. Blood spattered the glass behind him. He fell to his knees, and she gripped the shoulder of his shirt. She didn't stop and she didn't let him fall. She just kept hitting him. No breaks, no magic, no mercy, Shield Maiden said again. His face was a swollen mess of pain. The low moan that escaped him was answered with another trio of blows. When he'd stopped resisting and stopped making sounds when she hit him, she finally let him drop in a bloody heap. She stood there, panting with adrenaline. She could feel her heartbeat in her ears. <sighs> Thinking quickly, she knelt to search him. There wasn't much to find chalk, a pen, a spare notebook, some other odds and ends. She knew enough to know each could be used for magic in the right hands. She glanced over her shoulder at the half-finished rune on the floor. Good thing she hadn't given him the chance. When she was good and sure that he was unconscious and disarmed, Shield Maiden touched her earpiece. It's me. I got the captain. He's down. It's over then. Metacreature prison staff are swarming the ship, Aiko said. I'm stepping away from this one. They don't need to see Laser Wolf damaged and flightless. Can you handle it? Yeah, I'll fill you in later. 
Gel Girl will be there to help you get the rest of the crew. Aiko out. The young woman said officially. There was a slight burst of static. Shield Maiden felt the vertigo and the ship suddenly splashed down, hauled down by the Queen's forces. Water rushed around the sides and it was ground into the Ohio River once again. Gel Girl. Gel Girl? Shield Maiden touched her earpiece again. I'm here. I got Rose and Anubis to the docks, Gel Girl reported. I got the captain. Well, ain't that wrapped up in a pretty bow? She sounded ecstatic. Come back to the ship. We're gonna arrest the whole crew. Shield Maiden put a blood-stained fist on her hip, grinning. Uh, probably shouldn't, sugar. Set the set and all. Jill Girl said, I really don't want to be seen by Her Majesty's Finest, if and you don't mind. What? I can't take credit for all this. No one said you was. You're just the last one on the scene, that's all. Jill Girl chuckled a little. Uh, Anubis and Rose will mate you. Uh, I'm going to step off so I don't get eyeballed too closely, yeah? Um, all right. Shield Maiden didn't understand, but didn't try to stop her. I guess I'm on my own for now. Tell Anubis and Rose I'll meet them back at my apartment. Rose will know where to go. What unfolded next was a bizarre scene of the massive ship being dragged sideways to an extending dock. It was too large and the river too shallow to go all the way to the edge, so they'd extended a floating dock to the vessel. The hunter's trap ground to a halt, floating silent. The yellow lights twinkled here and there, but it was otherwise motionless. One side of the panel doors groaned while the valve turned and then swung open. Shield Maiden stood in the doorway, Mr. Moon limp on her shoulder like a sack of potatoes. The gathered crowd of green and gold stared, guns and staves and more at the ready. She looked down at them, unsure. Then one of them pointed to shout. It's Shield Maiden! Let her down! The ramp was extended with a handy crane, and the superhero slowly walked down the plank. She arrived at the bottom, stepping carefully and setting Mr. Moon's body on the dock. This is the captain. She put her fists on her hips. Mr. Moon. Mr. Moon? The Mr. Moon? One of them gaped. He caused that double-engine explosion in India two years ago. And that riot at the palace. Add breaking and entering, assault with a deadly weapon, double kidnapping, and a whole bunch more to that. Shield Maiden said while they came to collect him. He was put in rune-marked cuffs and carted away on a stretcher. Who's in charge here? She addressed the group. I am. A man in silvery armor stepped forward. Midnight, Hunter First Class of Her Majesty's Armed Forces. Midnight, Shield Maiden said, overjoyed. I'm so glad to see... Um... She caught herself and then coughed. Right, well... <clears throat> there's, there's about 3,000 more people on that ship. She tried to sound official and not think about the last time they'd met when he'd railed her from behind in a hotel room. The red on her face was a little telling. Right. He seemed to catch on, turning. Fan out. We'll do this by the book. Start setting up teleportation circles. Several robed, pointy-headed figures put a fist on their shoulders and then turned on their heels to make it so. How are we going to get everyone off the ship? They have enough firepower and food to be there for weeks, Shield Maiden said. It's the size of an aircraft carrier, and we've already detected a number of magic users aboard. Midnight followed her with a swish of his cape. They stood shoulder to shoulder, marveling up at the bullet-shaped black vessel. Midnight lifted his arm and spoke into a wrist-mounted device. Doctor, would you come forward, please? Always so polite. A familiar voice made Shield Maiden whip around. 
an old man in a bowler hat, black tie, and with glowing yellow eyes, slowly emerged from the crowd. They made way for him like they were afraid of him. He stopped, locking eyes with Shield Maiden. He grimaced. <gasps> Dr. Galaxy? Shield Maiden said, lifting her golden defense. Easy, he's on our side, Midnight lifted a hand to say. Don't speak for me, young man. Dr. Galaxy frowned severely. Shield Maiden, we meet again. I walked with a limp for several weeks after our last encounter. The purple-clad hero said nothing but frowned back at him. But yes, it's true. The meta-creature queen, Gaia, charged me with certain duties. He looked angry, having to explain to her. A few more links appeared in Dr. Galaxy's Mr. Portal's confusing narrative. You work for her, Shield Maiden murmured. You were there when the Set the Set appeared in this city months ago. Her frown turned deeper and more accusatory. You're not helping the metacreature community out of the kindness of your heart or your own interests. You're on a leash. He said nothing back to her, but reached into his jacket pocket. A badge flipped open. It looked crisp and shiny, like he rarely ever touched it. The emblem was the Golden Deer of Switzerland, with feathered wings spread behind it, wreathed in flame. The Autonomous Neutral Group for the Extermination of Living Set the Set. Angels, for short. He gave a grimace at the silly group title. Shield Maiden's jaw fell open. You knew Gel Girl was... But more to the matter at hand, Dr. Galaxy said a bit louder than he normally spoke, turning rudely away from her. Dr. Galaxy had sent Gel Girl to space, orbiting Saturn. Not because he was a supervillain and she was trying to stop him, but because killing Set the Set was his job. He'd expected to bring back a corpse, bringing the train back. Shield Maiden put a hand over her mouth, horrified. At your command, Hunter First Class, I shall send the entire ship to Mars, killing everyone aboard. A ripple of magic in the air could be felt by everyone, even Shield Maiden. It turned her stomach.